In this video we're going to be looking at the binary search algorithm. And we're going to start our discussion with a real life example. This will allow us to appreciate the usefulness of the binary search algorithm. So suppose you had a telephone book. So I'm just going to draw here a telephone book. And you are looking for the phone number of one particular person. Say they were called John. Their last name was John. And you know that the book is sorted by last names from A to Z. How would you go about finding the number that corresponds to John? One way to do it, it's a very silly way, but one way to do it is to examine every single element from the beginning all the way to the end until you find your John. So you just start at the beginning, examine every single element, compare it to John, is it the same? No. Move on to the next element. So we're coming up with an algorithm to find our John here. And so you would examine every single element until you find John and then the corresponding number would be the one that you're looking for in the book. That would be one way. The other way, and this is the right way of doing it and this is the way that everyone does it, is to open up the book in the middle and then read out an entry. Suppose that entry happens to be something that starts with M, say Mark. If you open up the book at the middle and you realize that it was at the M section, what are you going to do? You will forget about everything that comes after it, after that part that you just opened up at, and you will start examining the book only leftwards, only this part. Why? Because you know that John, J comes before M. So you are using the fact that this list is sorted, the book is sorted by last names from A to Z alphabetically. And you're exploiting this property of the telephone book in order to accelerate your search. So you're dividing the book in half, looking at examining one element in the middle, and if you realize that your element comes before it, so you just discard everything that comes after it, so you've essentially eliminated half of the book the book was so heavy you've eliminated half of it and now you could just examine the second part and then you keep on doing this open up another page right here in the middle in the middle of that second part that smallest part here and then proceed in the same way until you find your John so you're essentially dividing your list by half and half and half or the book by half and half and half until you land on your John and this of course speeds up your search so what we just did is we compared linear search to binary search on a sorted list. So we had a sorted list. That sorted list was essentially the telephone directory. It was sorted according to the last name. And we tried the linear search and we said it was going to be so long if you examined every single element in the book from the beginning to end. And we said that this was just ridiculous. And the right way of doing it, and this is the approach that most people do it with, is binary search and that is to divide your list in half. Look in the middle, compare your element to the element in the middle. If yours comes before it, then you would discard everything that comes after it and then move on to examining only the first half of the book. Do this over and over again, dividing your list by half every time, and then you will find your element a lot more quickly than by doing it through linear search. So this is just to give you an idea of how binary search works in real life and we will want to implement that in code. So let's look, let's examine the complexity of such an algorithm. So I described the algorithm, you basically keep on dividing your list in halves. What is the complexity of such an algorithm? Like we said, we are dividing the list in half every time. So it essentially relies, so if you want to know how many steps are involved in a binary search, you will have to figure out how many times we can divide our list that we're examining in half. Because this is what we're doing. We're taking a list, examining the mid element. If our element is larger than it, then I discard everything right here and then examine that part of the list. And then perform the same process again. Divide my list in half, compare my element to the mid element, and so on and so forth. So the number of steps that it would take us to find the element we're after in the worst case scenario is the number of times we could divide our list by half. And the number of times you could actually divide a list in half is basically log base 2 of 
how long your list is. So if we had a list of eight elements, we could divide it once by two, that would give us a four. Divide it again by two, you would get a two. And then divide it once more and then you reach your one. So how many times can we divide an eight by two is basically one, two, and three. And this corresponds to log base two of eight. And this is why we say that our algorithm runs in big O of log n. And this is a significant improvement over linear search which ran in big O of n. Big O of n means we examine every single element of the list, whereas here we are eliminating half of the list every time. And this provides the significant improvement that we have here. The only issue with binary search is there's this sorting requirement. We need to deal with a list that is sorted. If the list is not sorted, and we cannot search based on that sorting, then we cannot use binary search. Binary search in fact works because we are exploiting this property that is the order of the elements. If there was no order that existed on the list, then we cannot use binary search. So just keep that in mind. There is an advantage to using a binary search, a very considerable advantage, but there's of course this, the sorting requirement. But sometimes we're dealing with lists that are always sorted in a program. So in these cases, it is much more advantageous to use binary search than to use anything else. So now that we've looked at binary search and how it works, let's start brainstorming some ideas uh, in order to come up with the algorithm, which will basically allow us to write down some code performing binary search. So let's brainstorm some ideas. First of all, we realize that binary search is defined in terms of binary searches. Why is that? Because I'm saying that when I examine a list, so I'm given a list, I'm given a particular element and I want to find it in the list. What do I do in binary search? I divide the list in half. I look at the mid element and if my element that I'm looking for happens to be larger than the mid element, then I discard the left part of it or the lower part of it and I start examining the right part of it and perform the same process again. So I'm going to perform a binary search once more but this time considering only this part of the list. So it's as if I restart the entire process with a new list but in fact this new list is just half the list I dealt with before. And I will keep on doing this process so divide once more and then suppose my element is less than that one then I discard this part and I have a new list and perform binary search on that one. So we say that binary search is defined in terms of other binary searches which act on different searching spaces. And the fact that binary search is defined in terms of binary search, that is one thing is defined in terms of the same thing, means that we could implement it using recursion, as we've seen in the recursion video. Something defined as, uh, using the same thing. So I'm defining a function using the same function, I could maybe implement it using recursion, and we'll see how to implement it as recursion, as a recursive function. Uh, we're going to be using an array as our list, because it is so convenient. Um, so this is a few things that we will need to do. While I was describing the algorithm, I said a few things. First, I said we will look at examine the mid element of a list. And so we, there will need to be a part where we find this central element or mid element. So we need to find the index of this central element. Since we're dealing with an array, we're going to have to deal, use the index of the central element. So there's this part that we need to figure out. So I'm just brainstorming some ideas for our algorithm. We also know that we will require some comparisons. We will have to compare the element we are searching for with the central element. If the element we are searching for happens to be equal to the central element, then all we need to do is return the index of that central element. And this will be the result. If our search element is less than the central element, then what we do, we discard everything that is higher than the central element and we perform a binary search on the lower part of the list. And if our searched element happens to be greater than the central element, then what do we do? We perform a binary search on the upper part of the list. So we will need these comparisons in our code. And finally, if after performing this entire algorithm we cannot find the element that we are searching for, then we will have to return something which will indicate that. And what we do here is we return a minus one.